guys. Welcome to Mission Impossible. Well, I'm really glad that you decided to join a small group. I know we've pushed and pushed, but there's a reason that we're so passionate about small groups. Because we're we're convinced that uh, while we love doing Sunday morning church, um, the small groups really help you to go to another level. They really, in that level is uh, uh, the ability to connect with the body of Christ, meaning the other people in the church. And so uh, I know you're busy. We're all busy. But it's important to prioritize uh, you know, your faith and put some energy and, and effort into that. Because um, I'll guarantee you, you're going to be rewarded. So uh, this week, we had talked about David and Goliath. And we talked about how David was facing an impossible situation. And I gave you some steps. There was four of them, I believe, to um, for you to walk through uh, to be able to conquer uh, an impossible situation. And I also talked about how there's God's part and then there's our part. And every great story in the Bible has both. You see God... Uh, calling out a leader, challenging that leader to believe in him and lean on him in faith and trust. And that leader has to have the courage, the boldness to step forward and uh, and disregard the doubters, the haters, um, all those that would come against, and, uh, and even learn to tune out that voice of the enemy that wants you to doubt and just give up and say all is lost. But rather, step forward in faith, and when we do that, God shows up. And the reason why God does it this way is because he wants to show himself to people. God wants to be found. He's not hiding from us. But he also wants us to rely on him and to have our faith in him. It's very important to him that we trust him and that we really put that faith in action. And so this week in our small groups, um, there's going to be some discussion questions that your facilitator is going to work through with you. But before we do that, I want you to watch Donna Howe's testimony one more time. Let's do that together. My name is Donna Howe, and I'm here to give you my testimony about my Mission Impossible. In January of 2007, this journey started with a trip to South Carolina to visit my sister and we went to church that Sunday and they were playing a song my grace is enough and during that song the anointing came and it was very very heavy and I laid down on the floor and I kept asking God what what are you trying to say to me God what what are you trying to tell me? What are you preparing me for? In February of 2007, I went to the doctor for a colonoscopy for my 50th birthday. And I was told that I had stage 3B cancer, colorectal cancer. And when I went to the cancer specialist in Rochester, they told me it was a grim outlook but um, I was going to have to have radiation, numerous surgeries, and chemotherapy. I started with um, a surgery, and then I had um, radiation for six weeks, and then I had another surgery, waited six more weeks, and then started chemotherapy. The chemotherapy was extremely um, trying, and... and um, it was very rough for me anyway. I know it was for my husband too, but it t took a toll. I spent years in bed. I um, didn't remember things. I couldn't remember things. You get that chemo brain. And um, like one, one example, I was at Sean and Julie's and, and I apparently paid Julie for something I ordered from one of the kids. And later we went for a ride but then the next week I told Julie, oh, I'll pay you for that now. And she said, Donna, you already did. And I'm like, what? And she said, you paid me last week. Don't you remember being at my house and going for a ride with me and going to see somebody? I said, no, nope, not at all. So that's where my memory was. I accused Bob of 
stealing my money out of my checkbook. He had to call my son, his son, and I had to ask him, were we somewhere? And indeed we were, that I had written the check and not Bob. And so your memory was way bad. All right, then as chemo went on, they told me that basically I was going to die, and we stopped chemo. And during that time, I was in my bed one night, and the room was pitch black. It was so dark, and I couldn't breathe. I couldn't speak, and I felt a weight on my chest, and I know that it was a spirit of death. And I, I tried to say, get away from me, but I couldn't, couldn't. But then something deep within me rose up and said, Surely I shall not die, but live and declare the wonderful works of the Lord. And in an instant, just like that, that pressure had left me, and I was up walking around and talking. 18, verse 17. And then also verse 18 goes on to say, He has not given me over unto death. So we decided to start chemotherapy again, which I did, but we ended up stopping anyway. I did not complete the chemotherapy rounds. Um, I still have a lot of side effects from the chemo though. And really I didn't even want to do this. I did at first, but then I didn't want to give my testimony because a couple weeks ago I had a bowel obstruction and I went to the hospital they gave me some medicine which I had a reaction to and I was pretty violent during the time they were trying to put an NG tube in down my nose and into my stomach and because of all the surgeries I've had I'm not supposed to get an NG tube put in that way and the nurses went and listened so of course I was fighting them and I hit one of the nurses and spun her around a little bit but then they let me go without one and the next morning the small bowel obstruction had resolved itself and I came home thank God and then then I didn't want to do this because of going through the hospital again and and the reaction that I was having so I was going to call Sean and tell him, no, I'm not doing it. And I was afraid and ashamed. And um, I was talking to my sister, and she said, Donna, don't you remember when you were on your deathbed and that spirit man rose up inside you and said, you, you shall live and not die? Well, that same spirit, that same spirit was the one that was rising up inside you and saying, no, you are not going to hurt me. And after that thought process, um, I decided, yeah, I'm going to do it. I said, yes, I'm going to do it. And the good news of that is when I got over that fear of doing it and said, yes, I'll do it, I went to the doctor, and he said that the, the bowel had kinked itself and um, blocked off my colon, and then during the night it resolved itself so I don't have to have another surgery. And that is what God is. Everything's possible with God. I do want to say that man had given me a death sentence, but I know that people were praying for me around the world. And it's so important to have a support system, your church family, because I would not, could not have made it without my faith and trust that God was using people um, to do that and my sister also she had a dream and she said Donna as you went through things she said it was like you were riding the horse called faith but then all these other people were riding horses and they came up with you and they joined their faith with your faith and that's why things are possible with God because of the faith and the prayers of the saints That is such a powerful testimony that Donna Howe gave us there. I mean, talk about Mission Impossible. 
she was literally facing death. I mean, literally, at one point, she says she felt the spirit of death on her. Like, this is it. Curtains closed. And what happened? Deep inside of her, her faith rose up. And she, you know, quoted the word of God and declared it. She was not going to die, but she was going to live. And she understood that was a promise from God. And she grasped onto that. But what she grasped onto that with was her faith. What an incredible testimony. I mean, it's just, it's just awesome. You know, we don't realize how many of these stories play out right here in our very own midst at our church. And so I hope you were encouraged by Donna's story. And, uh, and I hope you got something out of that. You know, the key she said there, too, with faith is, is, is prayer and trust, right? She had to trust and have faith in God, but she also credits the prayer of her church family, okay? All the people she knows and the people that came up beside her. I love the analogy or that the vision her sister had about a horse called Faith, right? And uh, Donna was riding it, and then as she looks, almost like a movie scene, all these other people come riding up on their horses of faith right alongside of her. You know, that's a powerful thing. The Word of God tells us where two or more are gathered, there he is in our midst. So there's something powerful that happens when uh, when we unify ourselves, right? Unity is near and dear to God's heart. And when his people put aside different agendas and different opinions and rather come together and focus on a single thing, it can be very powerful. And that's what we saw in Donna's case. People came, they prayed, they believed for her, and her own faith rose up. And it all came together to see God, once again, take an impossible situation and and handle it. You see, um, things with men are impossible, but with God, nothing is impossible. All right, now I was telling you, the key, one of the big keys to Donna was faith, okay? She had incredible faith that rose up within her in her darkest moment, and that faith really just kind of exploded things into into an awesome uh, future and seeing God show up. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you a clip of a great movie. A lot of you have already seen this, but uh, I am a huge fan of the Indiana Jones series. And there's this one particular scene. The setup is Indy is under a lot of pressure to save his father. Um, And he faces an impasse, right? He's got this chasm in front of him, and he's got to get to the other side. And uh, here Indiana Jones, and even says it in the movie clip, He's facing an impossible situation. He can't get across it. It's impossible. And so uh, you'll see the clip. It's pretty cool. Um, And you will see that the answer in this clip is is, uh, pretty neat. And uh, so let's watch this clip together um, and check it out right now. from the lion's head.
So there you have it. The answer was a leap of faith, right? It's an impasse. It's an impossible situation. He doesn't know what to do. He's got to save his dad. It's intense. And in his darkest moment, just like Donna, he had a leap of faith. That's right. He had to jump out in a leap of faith. And that was the answer to getting across that impossible situation. How cool is that? You see, that might just be the movies, but let me tell you something. It's in real life too. We face impossible situations. We really do. It could be our finances sometimes. It could be job situations. It could be relationships. It could be health situations. Look at Jesus said in this world, we will have trouble. And uh, no doubt we do. So, but the difference is, as a Christian, as a, as a child of God, we have the right to call on him. He wants us to call on him and express our faith in him. That's incredible, right? And so when we're facing an impasse, we too need to stir up our faith. We need to call on our brothers and sisters in the church, our church family. We need to call on each other to have faith with us, to stand with us. And we pray and we earnestly seek God. And then inside, we have faith. We believe that God will come through for us. Let me tell you something. The Bible tells us the one way that you can please God, one way that you can please God is by having faith. How do I know it? Because the Bible says the opposite. It says without faith, it's impossible to please God. Folks, he wants us to have faith in him. He, he's daddy. He wants us to trust and believe that daddy has our best interests in mind. Okay, now it's time to take it to discussion with your facilitator. Uh, the facilitator is going to work you through a series of questions. And please be comfortable. Um, everything we do in small groups is confidential. And it's really why we have small groups. Um, and we're just going to do some talking now. That's the one thing uh, we don't get to do on Sunday mornings that we can do in small groups. Is we can have some dialogue uh, along the teaching. So hopefully you'll enjoy this experience. And I know the facilitator will close you out and pray for you guys anything that you might be facing. I hope and trust you have a great week and your faith is increased.